Hi, Chris Delion here for LMC 6313, Principles of Interactive Design, um, the TA. And in this series of videos, of course, I'm showing dynamic website generation. Uh, what I'm going to show today is how to use curl to get the return values from an outside website. Uh, curl is an extremely powerful thing. It's going to be essential to how we're going to interact with APIs outside of the web content that we're developing, which, of course, allows us to get things like tweets, uh, photos off of Flickr, uh, information from New York Times bestseller list, all types of information on the web is available via API, and curl is often at the center of how we use that. Now, for starters, uh, I've got the same setup that I always have when I start these videos. I'm trying to save you a couple minutes in case you're already following along. The gist is, to get anything going, we need a space that has PHP running on it. And so, in my case, I'm using my school server. Uh, you could use your own service if you want. Uh, most web providers out there anymore run PHP on their servers. Uh, we're not using SQLs or databases this time, just PHP. And uh, you want to make sure you have a mapping found to what URL you can refresh to view your page uh, on the web. Unless you're running a local server. If you've Googled how to do that and that's where you want to test your projects, obviously you're welcome to. Uh, I prefer to test it live on the space that I'm going to deploy to to make certain I've got the exact same PHP settings, configuration, plugins, etc., security situations, and so on. Uh, so I've got my thing set up. So I created a start.txt file that just had the plain text in it uploaded it to my FTP, opened that URL corresponding to it in my browser to make sure I'm looking at the same file, and now I can rename that to something more useful. Uh, index.php, there we go. And of course, because index.php is what it looks for if it can't find, if there's no file name in the URL, I can just point the computer to the folder, and here's the file that we're looking at. And let's do our little bit of, let's make our curl call. Uh, obligatory, let's see, stuff at top, break line, PHP, echo, sanity check, PHP is working, refresh, there we go. So, again, I've got mine set up, so when I edit my text file from the FTP client and click save, when I refresh the browser, it's already been automatically uploaded for me. Uh, if you've not yet configured your space to do that, it's different for every FTP client, different for both operating systems that are in uh, main use today, or I guess all three. Uh, it's worth figuring out a way to improve your workflow like that. Otherwise, you wind up editing the local file, dragging and dropping onto your editor, clicking, you know, uh, overwrite, then refreshing, which is going to slow you down. Those iterations are going to help you out. It's worth figuring out. But okay, so we've got our PHP. Uh, even though the whole section we're doing for curl today, you could really do uh, in PHP without having code outside, without having text outside the PHP. I like to put text outside the PHP as well, uh, just so that if something goes wrong and we see a blank page, we know that the problem was our type on the PHP, meaning we have a totally blank page, or are we just getting no output, which could be a different reason to see a blank page. So it's useful to have text outside of our PHP block. As another reminder, uh, you can totally, with PHP, have arbitrarily many blocks of PHP. Echo br more PHP here. Uh, it's not at all constrained to a single block of code at the top or the bottom or otherwise. It's wherever you want to insert it in line directly even into, into the HTML. Okay, now to write our curl call, I'm going to explain what it does right after I get it done. We're going to write ch, or I'm calling this like c handle for curl handle. Let's curl in it or send URL, and this is we're going to get into URL. We're going to do one that I'm quite certain it's going to work for a while, so this video doesn't get too easily obsoleted. We can then set the parameters or options on it. Set option for channel. I'm going to copy and paste that because I'm going to be typing that multiple times. As, you, as I mentioned before, if you make a typo in PHP, it's going to think you just created a new variable since it lets you sort of like make variables on the fly. Uh, and so it's handy if you have a variable you're using a lot of to copy and paste it to avoid typos. Curl opt URL, dollar sign URL, and that's just the string variable we declared the line before. I'm going to copy and paste actually the whole line because we're going to use a lot of the same structure. Curl opt return transfer one. It may stand a part of curl operations. You don't need to set the uh, timeout, but it's kind of a good habit to be in. Connect timeout. If you don't, it's going to have some other value by default. Um, so you may as well be conscious of or, or conscient aware of uh, what's going on. Curl results, we can call it anything, it's just the name of a variable. Let's curl execute, here's where the curl actually happens. Dollar sign channel, 
which is our curl handler. And then we want to close it, curl close, so we don't tie up server resources needlessly. And so now at that point, we have curl result is a value of whatever the view source is on that URL. And so let me show you what I mean by that. If I just echo curl result, save, and refresh this page, there's Google. <laughs> right? And if I do a view source, then you see it starts with stuff at top, which due to Google's formatting and CSS is actually being hidden. And then everything below that is verbatim, the exact HTML that got returned from this URL here. And that could be for my personal website, crystalion.com. Refresh. There's my website. Obviously, the images are broken because this is not on that site. This is just taking that HTML, sticking it into this file when we echo it out. Now, let's say we actually want to see what's in that HTML. Let me go back to the one that was uh, based on Google instead of my personal sites. Google.com. Refresh. Uh, by the way, that whenever I say refresh, I'm, I'm using Command R on Mac. On Windows, you can press Control R to get the same effect. Or you can click the refresh in your browser. We're just making sure that we're jogging the browser to check out the latest version of the file. Uh, so if I want to make that visible as the code, what's happening right now is we're literally seeing the HTML parsed as HTML. We can kind of filter it if we say curl result equals string replace. Everywhere in string replace, or everywhere in curl result, that there is a less than character, if we replace that with ampersand lt semicolon, which is the HTML code to show a less than character, actually, let me, let me make this illustration first. Maybe this will help clear it up. Uh, I'm going to comment out the echo. So we just see a simple page that's stuff at top. OK, notice if I say strong, strong, we can't see the tags, right? Because nothing inside of the less than greater than shows up in HTML. This gets interpreted as something else. If I said ampersand LT semicolon for less than and ampersand GT semicolon for greater than and do that in both places, now instead of seeing the HTML, we see the characters less than, strong, greater than. We can't see the tags. Less than slash strong, greater than. And see, all I did was I replaced the characters that get interpreted as HTML instead as the HTML code to show those characters on the page. And so what we're doing here is we're just doing that on an automated fashion to the entire string. So we're saying string, result, string replaces function built into, into processing or built into PHP, I'm making too many videos today. Uh, we want to operate on this string, the one we got back from our curl call as the view source on that URL. We're going to replace every occurrence of a less than character with the ampersand LT semicolon. And let's duplicate that same line, but switch it to be the greater than character and a GT, ampersand GT semicolon for greater than. And now when I echo the curl result, after it's been filtered through that, we basically get a view source on google.com. And now maybe you're thinking, okay, why, why would I want to do this? There's actually a number of reasons in that, as you've seen in previous videos, we can send through get parameters in the URL to fetch particular information to pass into PHP elsewhere on the web about, you know, give me results for such and such user. Uh, generate a page based on you know, time of day or based on uh, someone's options that they clicked in, in certain checkboxes and things. And so we can use forms to do a curl uh, that'll pass certain values in as get parameters to a URL and we'll get back a special or a different view source effectively from the curl based on the parameters you pass in. The way that APIs work, uh, Twitter, Flickr, are the two most common ones you deal with in this class, uh, there's a bunch of them out there, literally a ton. If you Google the internet for PHP and APIs, you're going to find a ton of things you can use. And what happens is we get a special URL uh, along with like in indicating our special authorization code for us as the user, um, secret tokens and things like that, queries of what word we want to find. So if we want to find um, pictures of puppies on Flickr, uh, we just there's a special URL we can access that if it has our special code in it uh, for us as the API author, it has the word puppy in there as part of the query information. It'll give us back an XML page automatically generated from their databases giving us the information we need to get to those images so we can display those images on our site. Uh, and so this is a really, really powerful thing to be able to get the text off of an outside website and either print it on yours 
or filter and make changes to it. If you've ever seen those goofy pages that do uh, silly things to words, uh, well, so if I, we can make one right now. I'm going to get rid of this stuff at the top, uh, and instead of showing the source by doing filtering for those characters, okay, let's take a look at this web page. So there's Google. And, okay, see where it says the word solutions? I want to change the word solutions. Solutions to, instead of business solutions, let's say business problems. Refresh the page. Business problems. Uh, we, can, we can filter and then represent the website in any way we want, and so sometimes you'll see goofy pages that find text that's plain text and add rap lyrics into it or base images on it or uh, otherwise have silly ways of playing with words, turning it onto Pig Latin, translation, and so on. It's using curl and filtering on top of it in an intelligent way with some non-trivial functionality programmed into how it's being filtered. But so that's curl, a really, really powerful part of PHP that allows our PHP files to talk to other PHP files that can then do intelligent accesses to databases for us, uh, get to information outside of our direct control uh, for really powerful ways of dealing with Facebook information and otherwise. So that's all I want to cover for now. I want to just get that apart separate from covering APIs. Uh, it's Chris Delion for LMC 6313, and I uh, look forward to talking to you more soon. If you'll stick with the videos. If you haven't subscribed, I ask you please do. Those numbers really help me be confident that when I'm making these, they're reaching people, as I want to keep churning these videos out. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.